Approximately 95% of the color correction process can and should be done using the primary wheels as they affect the image with a broad organic stroke. Unfortunately, many who are just starting out with Resolve are trying to grade their footage with secondary coloring tools such as the log wheels or curves which are great tools but if abused will have an artificial and drastic effect. They are absolutely beneficial as secondary correction tools for a restrictive and surgical adjustment, but relying only on them for our main correction will result in an unnatural look and colors that are completely off. In this episode, we'll cover the efficiency of the primary wheels so you can discover their potential. Let's get rolling. Remember how in the contrast and exposure episode in season 1 we touched on how the primary wheels affect the image in a very broad way and how the lift, gamma and gain regions overlap each other. Here's a quick example of how the primary wheels affect the luminance on this grayscale image. If you take a look at the waveform you'll notice how the gamma control has an all-encompassing effect over the whole dynamic range tapering off in the shadows and the highlights. The lift on the other hand has a linear effect over the shadows, it starts off in the shadow region and tapers off towards the highlights. The same thing happens with the gain control but affects the highlights again in a linear fashion which tapers off towards the shadows. The log wheels on the other hand have a more restricted effect on the luminance of your image compared with the more broader ones made with the primary wheels. In other words, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights are very constricted to the luminance range they define. There's a little bit of overlapping between the shadows, midtones, and highlights, which can be easily controlled by the low and high range values. For instance, if you bring down the shadows and you reach for the low range, you can control how much that bleeds over into the midtones. The same with the highlights. If you affect the highlights, for instance, you bring them down and you reach over to the high range, you can control how much that can be restricted to only the portion that you want to be affected. But how will all this help us color correct an actual image? Take for example this one. This is a log video file properly exposed and correctly white balanced. And we can tell that by looking at the waveform, where it shows us that everything is within the broadcast safe range. The first thing we'll do, we'll head over to the primary wheels and just dial in some contrast. Notice how when we dial in contrast, the video tends to pick up some saturation also. Keep that in mind when you will start adding saturation to the whole image. Adding contrast, obviously our image got darker, so we will reach for the gamma and just bring up the whole exposure until it looks good. By bringing up the gamma, we have to compensate with the gain and tame any highlights that might be on the verge of overexposing. Let's add some drama into the shadows. And again, bring up the gamma to compensate for our lift adjustment and brighten up the image. About there. So if you take a look at the waveform, you'll see how our primary adjustments covered most of the dynamic range we have available in the broadcast safe range. We are still missing some of the gaps down here in the shadows and up here in the highlights. So that's when we're going to reach over to the log wheels to make all those very restricted adjustments in the shadows and highlights. For instance, we'll just grab the shadows and we'll pull the bottom down just above the zero line over here on the waveform. Make sure that you don't crush that black point because you will lose any details available in the shadows, for instance, in this part of the image. Always pay attention to that. The same thing in the highlights. We can push the highlights a little bit higher if we want to or if we need. Sometimes Sometimes we don't. There is no information coming in in this spot which coincides with this part on the waveform so there is no need to push it further to reveal more detail. Always analyze your image and make sure to preserve the maximum details that your camera offers in the highlights or in the shadows. If you shot your video in a raw format like I did here with this Blackmagic Pocket 4K you have access to the camera raw where you can recover some of the lost highlights. If you click on this decode using clip, you will have available this highlight recovery. And if you look over to the scopes at the top of these two chopped off peaks, which are the blown out highlights in these two window panes. Check what happens if I click on this highlight recovery. All of a sudden that information comes back. So without highlight recovery, with highlight recovery. It's amazing how much detail we can recover in the highlights just by using this checkbox. 
Let's leave it on because we want all that information in the highlights. And before moving on, I wanted to show you one more trick to tame the highlights and the shadows if we don't have access to our metadata in the case of a raw clip. The shadow and the highlight slider is a quick way of recovering restricted shadow or highlight information without affecting much of the midtones. Use it as a quick way of recovering detail. So at this point, our image has a decent exposure and contrast, as you can tell by the waveform, which covers most of the dynamic range without any loss information in the highlights or shadows. Let's just label this node and create a new node for our saturation and balance. Let's undock our scopes and switch to the vector scope. Let's start by dialing in enough saturation until our image looks somewhat decent, around 65, 67 maybe. And let's take a look at the vector scope. Notice how the blob sits in the red and yellow quadrant, which indicates that our image sits a little bit on the warm side. Let's switch over to the parade. And sure enough, you can see how the red channel sits a little bit higher than the green and the blue. So at this point, as I mentioned in the white balance tutorial, you have a few options on balancing the image, either by using the temp and tint sliders or the offset or the printer lights in the offset adjustments. But since this is a more advanced tutorial, I wanted to show you a new way of balancing using the lift gamma and gain primary wheels. Remember how we need to compensate for any casts by pushing the color in the opposite direction. Let's start by pushing the gain in the opposite direction of red, which is still in our case, just enough. Keeping our eye on the parade to make sure that we're not pushing it too much, a little bit goes a long way let's say about there. Also, we need to compensate with the other wheels for any adjustments we'd made in the gain. Maybe our skin tone became too cold, so let's warm it up by pushing the gamma a little bit into the red and cool off the shadows a little bit by pushing the color into the blue. Remember how there is this dance between these three wheels. Every time you make a primary wheel adjustment, don't forget to compensate with the other wheels in the opposite direction. The same thing is valid when you are adjusting luminance. Okay, now let's check the RGB parade. We can immediately tell that the blue channel in the highlights sits way much higher than the green and the red. And that's this part in the image which has a blue cast. To correct that, we'll head over to the log wheels and we'll push the highlights into the reds until the channels are leveling out. The same thing happens in the shadows where we see that the lower bottom of the red channel needs to be lifted. That tells us that there is a blue cast in the shadow. So we have to neutralize that by pushing the color into the red until we have them all balanced out. At this point, we can tell by looking at the RGB parade that our highlights and shadows are neutralized, meaning that there are no color cast in them. If we want to be even more surgical of how much our shadow and highlights log adjustment affects our image, we can just go ahead and adjust that from the low range to make sure we restrict that shadow adjustment to only the bottom part of our image. And the same thing with the highlights. We don't want anything to bleed over beyond that region. We can adjust that from the high range say about there. Let's lift the level of our shadows just a little bit above that zero line and we can balance that bottom even more. So at this point we have a pretty solid base grade and from here we can go on with skin tone adjustments and any secondary color corrections such as adjusting the hue versus hue values or the hue versus saturation or luminance and so on. Well, hope this lesson was useful to unlock the effectiveness of the primary wheels and help you get an idea of how much potential they pack. Use them first to get a good looking base grade, then, and only then, start using the secondary grading tools, which we'll cover in the next tutorials. See you in the next one. 